Wentworth is full of twists and turns and it constantly strives to surprise its audience. At any given moment, anyone could just come to a grinding halt. The, the stakes are always so high. Top dogs, screws, laggers and backstabbers. Every double crossing, heartbreaking, jaw-dropping moment from the very beginning. It is worth the binge, it's completely addictive. I don't think anyone was expecting that. I certainly wasn't expecting that. Join us as we celebrate Australia's most epic drama, the critically acclaimed, multi-award winning global phenomenon. Wentworth is the kind of show that just keeps on giving, whether you want it to or not. <laughs> I'm Celia Island. You may know me as Liz. And this is Wentworth, Behind the Bars. Since its premiere on Foxtel's Soho channel back in 2013, Wentworth has become a global franchise, syndicated around the world and a proud recipient of countless awards, including six shiny Logies. I even pinched one of those myself. I'm pretty sure no show has ever won most outstanding and most popular. So I think that speaks to the force of the fans that they were able to come out in such numbers to vote. Given its content, its violence, its basic, raw, dark humanity, and the explicit tone of everything that takes place in here in order to survive. It's not a pretty place to be, but it's an important place to be the way that it's shot on Foxtel. They've given the writers freedom to take risks. We've got to make choices that perhaps in another universe would have been censored or hobbled, and we've really had a big adventure and I can't imagine doing it anywhere else. One of the great things is that our stories just don't resonate to Australian audiences, it goes globally. The US, UK, France, Canada, Macedonia, Israel, Wentworth plays in a whopping 140 territories worldwide. Some countries even remake their own versions. Wenn du nicht den Arsch in der Hose hast, die Konsequenzen dafür zu tragen. Wow. War doch gar nicht so schwer. Alsjeblieft. Was dat nou zo moeilijk? Please. Wow. That wasn't so hard, was it? I think audiences were crying out for interesting representation and Wentworth provided that. We provided a full cast of females who were not just limited to love interests or the girlfriend or the wife or the sexual object. We actually said, these women are human and here's a story that you'll want to watch. But also the LGBT representation, I think, came at a time where it was needed and it was wanted. And I think the fans have gravitated because of that. Before we look at the highly anticipated seventh season, let's go back to day one. They think it takes a strong woman to rise to the top in here, but it doesn't. It takes a smart one. In walks our central character, B. Smith, a victim of domestic violence. She's been sentenced to Wentworth for the attempted murder of her husband. And look out, ladies, this prison will never be the same again. We try to set up a very bold, very strong characters that are living in this world that is Wentworth. And within that, it is about survival, you know, life and death. And I think that was pretty gutsy to start where we did. The fact that at the end of the first episode, we killed Catherine McClemens, who was playing the governor, which showed to everybody, oh, this is going to be different. Ooh, they're not afraid to kill off a main character. So B was lucky to make it through episode one alive. But she's about to learn just how dangerous her enemies can be. Your husband found Debbie in her bedroom unconscious. Someone just tell me if she's okay. Please, anybody! Just tell me! I go to the morgue for B because she couldn't go, and I say to Debbie, your mum, 
of you to the moon and back. The heartbreaking death of Bee's daughter is the turning point for her. Now she has nothing left to lose. Oh, you're gonna pay for what you've done. I never forget the end of season one, that shock of seeing Jax have that bee stabbing her in the neck and that sort of bleeding out moment was like, oh my God. But of course, when one villain falls, another one takes her place. Season two sees the introduction of the freak. And boy, does she bring a whole new level of terror. Each and every person here will know their place. Who are you? My name's Miss Ferguson. But you can call me Governor. The nature of villainy is that it's complex, and I was relishing the opportunity to be unleashed <laughs> on the freak. I would often ask the directors of a particular scene, can you see my moustache twirling? It was teetering that fine line a lot of the time. Ferguson is a master manipulator, and she's soon using B to get to Frankie. It's in your best interest to strike first. I'll do it when I'm ready. There was a knife fight just in this laundry between Frankie and B, which was a six hour fight. And in the process, Nicole De Silva broke her wrist. I came away from that scene feeling like I had been in Fight Club. <sighs> My favorite moment in the series, and it still thrills me to think about, was where B escapes and she emerges from the hospital doors to the outside world and the camera spins around her as she puts on her hoodie ready to enter the world as this escaped criminal. And to this day, that moment gives me goosebumps. Now on the outside, B's on a mission to seek revenge for Debbie's death. All right. I want to know why you killed my daughter. In that scene, what we have is the ex exploration of one of the major themes of the show for me. You have B coming into prison as a hairdresser who attempted to kill her uh, violent husband but couldn't go through with it. And then she's confronted with the prospect, this bloke has killed her daughter. Can she pull the trigger? And if she does pull the trigger, does it change her forever? With her newfound badass status, he returns to Wentworth and assumes the burden of being top dog. Freak. Which marks the beginning of the freak's unravelling. You don't run this prison. I do. Of course, Wentworth isn't all violence and vengeance. There's also a whole lot of love. Oh, bless. Wow. Oh, he's oh, <laughs> At its heart, Wentworth is about a family. And it's about these women from very disparate parts of life being thrust together and having to work out how to get on, how to create a community and live and exist together. When they're not killing each other, it's a really nice family. But with the freak in charge, well, let's just say, some people just want to watch the world burn. They call me a freak. A monster. They're right to be afraid. So what do you do when you've burned your set to the ground? You build a bigger one, of course. Here we are, girls. Yeah. Home sweet fucking home. Hey. Woo! It's an incredible set. It actually exudes a personality and a depth of darkness that invades you when you're here and you're shooting. The details in everything, everything is so beautifully thought out that it brings you to this place that it just gives you your character instantly. All the cells are identical, but if you walk into all of them, they each have such a different vibe. And walking into mine, it taught me a lot about who Burma was. 
You're way better than this place. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know if I am. Well, yeah. I was struck by how small it was. And I thought, oh my God, she's been here for seven years and this is her life. This room is her life. With a whole new set to play with, we really had some fun in season four, especially when the latest inmate turns out to be the freak. A very tricky thing to try to pull off. How in the world the person who'd been running that prison would end up in teal in that environment and stay alive Certainly she would have been kept in isolation, but isolation is no help to a master Machiavellian like Jan Ferguson. Oh, that's for sure. Before long, the freak's pulling the strings from the inside and has Kaz, a new inmate, and Jake, the crooked new guard, doing her bidding. I've been warned about you, Joan. Don't be too sure of anything anyone tells you, Jake. B starts to lose her influence with the women. I can see the crack, Smith, and that means Ferguson can too. You need to remind everyone who's in charge. Because she's too busy falling in love. Everyone I care about ends up dead. You care about me. <sighs> we should get back for the count. She was in, in a domestically violent relationship and then she also encountered a relationship that she was a little bit confused by. She fell in love with another woman, even though she had defined herself as heterosexual. I'm not gay. I don't care what you are. Looking back on four seasons of Wentworth, I think my favourite scene is looking up at the clouds and the clouds are forming seahorses. Did you know that seahorses like to swim in pairs? Do they? Yeah, they do. They link tails so they don't lose each other. We didn't realise at the time, but it became such an iconic theme for that relationship. I get sent seahorses all the time from my fans, which is so incredibly sweet. Oh, I win. After killing off their main character, everyone was waiting to see where the writers would take Wentworth in season five. Even when I read the scripts, I'm, oh, oh my God, I can't wait to see what happens. You know, it's exciting television. Fuck. Poor Ali. She has one very focused idea in her mind, and that is to, to kill the freak. And she tries. A lot more goes into a fight scene than you, than you might think, because it kind of looks so seamless. Hours and hours worth of rehearsals and stunt choreography is kind of reduced to maybe two minutes of, of fight on screen. Everyone's fears would be realised when, with B out of the way... Who's next? Ferguson really steps up her villainy. Talk to Talk to they gave me such constant gifts. You can almost hear uh, the writer's room, you know, quivering with glee as they come up with some of those things. You've licked your last pussy. Whoa, that really brings new meaning to Cat Got Your Tongue. It wasn't just the script we had fun with. We also tackled our most ambitious stunt yet, the car accident that happens to be a real turning point for Kaz. The most challenging scene was definitely the brawler scene. They had this big van in a rotisserie, and there was guys just pulling it because Tammy was in there doing her thing, and I went, wow! <laughs> And then we had a day in a tank while Will saves Kaz. A man saves her, and that was such a turning point for Kaz. And it was a beautiful moment to play. It was a really hard moment to play. All I wanted to do was go, woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> but not all the action on Wentworth takes place on the road or in the water. This season sees Vera in bed with the enemy. I feel safe with you. So many times I've picked up scripts and gone, Vera, you're an idiot. Don't do it. In many ways, the fans of the show 
have loved to hate Jake, kind of thing, in the same way that they love to hate Ferguson. Ah, Ferguson, what a sweet, sweet treat it is when she finally gets her just desserts at the end of the season. Wish I could have taken credit for that one. That whole time as I was bearing her, she was screaming. She was screaming at me the whole time. <laughs> And, you know, you can never, ever get rid of something like that. Never. That'll always be there. Am I happy with where they left my character? No. No, of course not. Appalling, appalling behaviour. So, in season six, with Ferguson out of the picture, could the writers introduce someone who'd give the freak a run for her money? You betcha. You're never gonna fucking believe who's here. In walks Mari Winter. Mother? Madam Murderer. How come everyone knows you? Well, I mean, hardly everyone. Well, a few women may know me through my businesses. Oh, yeah? What do you sell? Sex. <laughs> oh, 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 I wasn't oh. expecting that. So. It's the most complex character we've had in the series in that she's a villain. And she's adorable at the same time. I really missed you. Hi. Mari soon finds a formidable foe in Rita, another newbie who's hiding the kind of secrets you really don't want on the inside. Good work, detective. It was very daunting. I'm really glad that I had Radawoy Hick with me because we'd worked together before. It's better if nobody knows about us. <laughs> they ain't gonna hear it from me. To protect her sister, Rita's eventually forced to take down Mari's muscle. Ruby's out, you're fighting me. Bullshit. Let's go. When we did the big fight with Drago, it was a whole, it was 12 hours. And I said, I want to do my own stunts. One take, I turned around and said, you want to go again? <laughs> I was tired, I was sore, and I just said, I'm going to take this bitch out. <laughs> and I did. Myself as right away, I wish I had a big sister like her, you know? And how could we forget that healthy dose of blackmail? Who is this? That raised some really disturbing questions. Could it be the freak blackmailing from the grave? Or even worse, is she still alive? How do you know she didn't... <gasps> ..dig her way out? Now you're all caught up on seasons one to six, Let's talk season seven. Action! You're being released back into general. The best is yet to come. Seriously. But don't just take my word for it. Finally let you out. Welcome back. Season seven is going to blow everyone away. Like, if they thought season six had emotion and physical... Wait till you get to seven. Now people are going to pay. Best season yet. Best season yet. Seriously. We were all sitting down at our group read-throughs before we started shooting this season. And I had goosebumps on my arms, which hasn't happened for a long time. We were all going... <gasps> <gasps> no! So without revealing too many spoilers, what can we expect from the new season? This is really weird to say as the person who's playing Kaz, but we have some really hot guys coming on the show. You might want to brace yourself. What for? I think that they get pretty excited over any new guy that comes in there. So Sean gets a pretty big standing ovation when he turns up. G'day, Jay. Sean. How are you, mate? That's been a while. Sean and Jake, you know, they have history together. We don't quite know what that history is when we first see them together, but we know that Jake sees trouble. Listen, just don't even think about starting this shit up in here, OK? But Sean's not the only fresh meat. Hey, Mr Stewart, who is the hottie? G'day. You want a gobby? We welcome a hot new doc. Dr Greg Miller, uh, fresh meat for season seven. He comes here with a big interest in anti-recidivism, so trying to get the ladies to not re-offend and has some interesting uh, ways of going about it. Why do you think you responded with violence? Why did you attack her? She's poison. The three new characters that we introduced at the beginning of season six, the momentum is really building on those characters now because we now know who they are. Mari. And what we see in season seven is what they're actually capable of. I'm scared for you, Reed. You know, Mari, I want payback for Drago. Audiences can look forward to the massive 
dynamics between Rita and Mari as they face off for power in the prison. Rita has to pull out all stops to protect and defend her sister Ruby from a very vengeful Mari. You try anything, you and Danny will be meeting up sooner than you think. Rita is what you call a reluctant hero, where I'm not so reluctant. It's not only the newbies who get to reveal their true colours. You still feel something. Ali, you're with Mari. Expect to see Ali finally growing up. I think she's slowly metamorphosizing into the woman that she always had the potential to be. For Vera, this pregnancy is quite a consuming part of her journey for season seven. Hey, Miss Bennett, you've really popped. Oh. <laughs> yeah, can you still work like that? Yeah, pregnancy's not an illness, Jenkins. I can still do everything perfectly well. And it's particularly significant for a character like Vera Bennett because her entire character trajectory has been getting on that governor's chair and staying in that governor's chair. It's a really interesting journey for Liz in season seven. The dementia is more advanced. You lost. You're Mari. Yeah, that's right. Well, don't worry, I'll look after you. Oh, right? I've, I've got a map. I'm not the only one Mari is leading astray this season, but I can't breathe a word about it. You know what happens to laggers in Wentworth? She's coming. For both of us. You find out really incredible information about one character that you would never have suspected that just turns the whole game on its head. A lot happens. It never goes where you, quite where you think it's going to go. It's action-packed. We have the most full-on, extraordinary, nail-biting ending that you would ever have seen of any Wentworth season. Prison does do weird things to people, eh? Dude, I'm killing it, killing it, smoking them all like a cigarette, cigarette. Yes, you don't know who I'm chilling with, but now you want to hold me close. It looks like you brag a lot like a top model with no portfolio. Doing this for 